When it comes to deck boxes for Cube or for larger collections of Magic the Gathering and other trading card games, the choice that you make is critical because cost is often very high for such large storage needs. Understanding the differences and similarities, therefore, is essential. And so in this video, we will compare and contrast the Ultra Pro Cub 3, the Grimmore by Wizard Foundry, the custom-crafted wooden cube boxes of Aaron Kane, as well as a few budget options, such as the Stack and Safe from Ultimate Guard. With so many choices at such a high price, it is critical to understand the strengths and weaknesses before you buy. So let's take a look. Before we get to the pricey stuff, I want to start with our basic budget options. That way we can compare the expensive storage options to the basic budget setup and ask ourselves if it really is worth all that extra cash. One basic cube storage option would be something like the Ultimate Guard Stack and Safe. This is a basic acrylic box that holds 480 sleeved cards. Since most cubes usually run anywhere between 700 and 900 cards, two of these would give you storage for 960 cards. Average retail price on these is about $12.50 US. So times two, that means that we can get compact, functional storage for our cube of up to 960 cards for about $25. Keep that in mind as we look at other cube storage boxes and ask yourself the critical question, what is this giving me for prices of $75 and up that two Ultimate Guard stack and safes are not giving me for $25? I am really glad the dividers slide out of these, allowing for better customization of our storage compartments. So another thing worth noting about the Ultimate Guard stack and safe is the lid. Obviously, this is just a pop on and off lid. Notice I can take it off with just a couple fingers. Uh-oh, how secure is this going to be if we toss it in our backpack? Well, uh, it will come off. Let's see just how much force it needs. And so I'm going to give it shake and I have gotten it to come off yeah all right come on it does come off I assure you uh here I don't want them to fall everywhere because that's a hell of a cleanup come on there we go okay ah my cards nonetheless I hope that demonstrates for you that while the lids will come off uh it does take quite a bit of force in order for them to do so remember that two of these will hold more than everything else that I'm about to show you in the video. And remember just what it took for this to come open as we look at other products. The Cub 3 is the first deck box from Ultra Pro designed with cube in mind. The artwork of the exterior is perhaps evocative of a power cube, although it is a shame they chose to use online-only artwork for something meant to hold paper cards. Come on, Dan Frazier can't be asking for that much money, but no matter. So I do need to start with cost, as this is far from cheap. Average retail price is about $80. I paid $89.95 for mine. But had I shopped around, I might have been able to find one discounted online for $70, $75. But either way, this is at least triple the price of two Ultimate Guard stack and safes. So let's see what it has to offer besides pretty artwork. The Cub 3 holds 900 sleeved cards which is ample room for most cubes. There's an added compartment for dice and counters, although the narrowness of this pull-out compartment isn't ideal. In case it is not immediately evident to you from the video, this is made of cardboard. Not plastic woven cardboard, but plain average regular cardboard. It's thick, I guess, and it feels like a few of the sides might be a thin plastic, but the entire interior, as well as most of the cover, is 100% cardboard, as far as I can tell. Now, these photos that I'm showing you here were taken right after I unwrapped it. And as you can see, it came brand new with many imperfections to the interior. The ends were peeling off or frayed along the edges. And if that's what is already happening to this brand new, I can't imagine what it'll look like after a year of actual use. Another thing that's really important to note about the Cub 3 is its size. This thing is 
huge. It is incredibly cumbersome and not at all convenient for transport. It's absolutely not ideal. I mean, I could maybe, I can get it in the back. I cannot zip up my backpack. Everybody was very, very stressed about whether or not the four binder could fit in a backpack and I showed that it could. Well, I'm not going to be able, maybe, maybe if you've got a particularly large backpack. So you're going to have to be carrying this thing, which is just enormous around if you're ever planning to play cube outside of your house. The entire cube is held together by two small magnets. At first I thought they were actual clasps, but no, they simply have a slight groove to help prevent the large cardboard lid from sliding out of place. Because of its folded in design, I don't think it's very likely that this thing is going to open up in transport and spill your cards everywhere, even though those two teeny tiny magnets don't do a very good job of holding the lid in because it's just a magnet. They're not actually clasping, but I'm not too worried about this spilling my contents everywhere. I'm more worried about just the practical issues of transporting something so large. The sides of this may be plastic. They feel a little harder, so there may be a plastic resin in it, but the vast, vast majority of the Cub 3 is cardboard. And here you go, proof that this is just cardboard. It did not take much effort for me to rip this up either. I'm not struggling here. After all, it's just paper. I see absolutely no advantage to the Ultra Pro Cub 3 over two stack and safes from Ultimate Guard. The Ultra Pro is larger but holds fewer cards. It is heavier, it is more likely to come open, more than three times as expensive, and it's made out of regular old cardboard. Quite frankly, I find it absolutely insulting that Ultra Pro would charge Magic players upwards of $80 for a cardboard box. This is a failure. Next up is the Grimmore from Wizard Foundry. Styled to look like a spell book, the Grimmore can hold 800 double-sleeved cards. So again, we're on the same capacity as the Cub 3 or the Stack and Safe. Retail price is $75 US. The Grimmore is manufactured in China from medium density fiberboard, which is a slightly better quality than particle board. The exterior cover is a plastic polyurethane styled to look like leather. One thing that really bothered me was that on their website, Wizards Foundry says that this is bonded leather, but it's actually plastic polyurethane and I even confirmed this with them. Being honest and open about details like this is essential, Wizards Foundry. If it's made of plastic, don't say it's made of leather. Can't afford to offer real leather? That's fine, but don't say it's leather. Now, the Grimmore is not designed exclusively with cube in mind and can also simply be utilized for storing large collections of cards or even deck boxes. There's added space offered to allow for the storage of deck boxes, but this also means cards are gonna share shift around inside somewhat, which isn't ideal for transport. The lid is secured by two tiny magnets that can't even hold it shut without cards inside. So the biggest problem that I have with the Grimmore is that it is in no way designed for even the slightest amount of transport. Let me show you. And by the way, this is designed to look like a book. And so the natural inclination might be to place it in your bookshelf, but you would never, ever want to do this if it actually had cards in it. Why? Because there's no latch for the cover for the lid. There are two small magnets, but that is all. And those small magnets, this is an empty Grimoire right here. Imagine this filled to capacity with cards. This is an empty Grimoire, and just under the weight of its own lid, <laughs> and I'm not in any way pushing that down here. I'm holding it right at the top, and I'm just barely, I mean, remember how hard I had to shake to get stack and safe? to come open, I really had to have some force from those cards inside pushing against the lid to eventually make it pop open. And this, just a jostle and it falls open. So, 
Yeah. So if you are going to fill this with cards, I would feel completely unsafe trying to pull it in and out of my bookshelf, in and out of my backpack. This is barely going to fit in a backpack. It's enormous. And so it's really meant to just sit on its side on a coffee table. And well, that's pretty much it. I think it's a major design flaw not to have a solid, and I mean solid, secure latch on this. A new version of the Grimmore is being kickstarted to include a latch, but I can only comment on what's in front of me, and as far as I'm concerned, this is a C minus. It's a $75 felt lined box to hold your cards and possibly your deck boxes. It's huge and it's not meant for transport. Just keep it flat on your coffee table, I guess. I'm not particularly impressed. Let's look at someone who's impressed me in the past, and yes, obviously has impressed me in the present. Handcrafted and custom made to order, an Aaron Kane cube box can be made to your specifications. Each one is different. Now, the one I am showing you holds upwards of 675 cards with removable dividers for 40 card land segments. But of course, these are custom and you can work with Aaron Kane to have one designed to specifically hold your individual cube. Want extra room for tokens or lands? Not a problem. With over 30 different woods to choose from, this will be a reflection not just of you, but of your cube and your personal style. No cardboard or plastic here. Now, price is going to vary depending on what you need, what kind of wood you want, what kind of extras you want. This example box that I'm showing you here would cost about $125 US, making it the most expensive thing we're looking at today. But it's not that much more than, say, the Ultra Pro Cub 3. I would urge anyone, anyone out there that's considering buying the Ultra Pro Cub 3 to save up for another couple of weeks and call Aaron Kane. And also, keep in mind that $125 price tag is because this one has added features like a maple inlay and a flush top. Again, it's custom work. You get to have one made for you to reflect you and to offer proper, and I do mean proper, protection for your cube. So here I have the Aaron Kane cube box completely filled to capacity with cards. One thing I really like as well is that as the lid slides on and off, there is absolutely no chance of it coming into contact with the cards. It's got a very clear distance above them, so I don't have to worry about the lid in any way interfering with or damaging the cards. And so now I'm going to slide very easily. Oh, don't you just love that sound? The lid on. And at this point, my cards are 100% secure. This is the way that the lid opens and shuts is from here. And so now let's see. Ah, it, it, it's not even an inch. Even an inch is it coming out, nor will it. Let's really come on. I want to open you. I want to open you. Nope, this is not going to happen because it is actually quality crafted wooden design. How much did your cube cost you? How much play and joy do you get from it? This might be what you save up for when you're ready to move out of that BCW cardboard box or those plastic Ultimate Guard stack and safes or the equivalent. This is a box for your cube for life. Quality, style, and craftsmanship like this is why Aaron Kane's boxes are an A+. I hope this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. And remember, you can't play Magic the Gathering at Target or Walmart. So whether buying singles or supplies, whenever possible, try and spend that money where you spend time playing this wonderful game. And that's at your local game store. You're supporting your Magic community.